Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Friday morning. Glad to have you along. Today we're talking about terrorism. We're talking about ISIS and also a new group called Corazon. I don't know, how new are they? What about all these groups? We'll run down the top 10 terror groups around the world with our terrorism expert, 436 MeTV Option 11. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to the show here on the showroom floor, of course, at Ventura TV. We're live on Comcast, channel 187 as usual, 43.6 and now 13.1. You can watch the replays of this show uh, if you can't watch in its entirety at 2 o'clock today on YouTube and Biz TV at 8 o'clock. And we're all over the place on YouTube now after this show airs, of course, on Comcast in 43.6 and 13. Point one. Hey, this is a programming note on Tough TV and Retro. This coming Tuesday on Veterans Day, kind of a war series. It's a one-time playing. It's called Every Man's War. It's on Veterans Day. That would be on 13.2, 13.4, and 13.7. Need a digital antenna. These are all over-the-air channels. So Every Man's War, it's a one-time showing. But it's uh, kind of a, it's almost like a combat series, but not quite. So that takes place on Tuesday, which happens to be Veterans Day. Kind of ties in with our subject today, and we're talking about terrorism. There is a growing concern about this uh, ISIS group, this terror group uh, overseas in this country. And how and why is this group growing by the numbers each and every day? And why are they growing to become so mighty and so powerful. Let's go to the videotape. I want to show you something recently that's all over YouTube now. Uh, some disturbing video recently posted, of course, on YouTube. And some of the news outlets like CBS News, members of ISIS actually using a surface-to-air missile and shooting down a helicopter. The video shows the helicopter still hovering even after it was hit. But it slowly descends and then crashes. This was an Iraqi military chopper, but the big question still looms large. How did members of ISIS get their hands on a surface-to-air missile? ISIS, which stands for Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, is a vicious, brutal group that terrorizes, tortures, they murder, they behead, they have forced amputations, mass killings. Uh, descendants from Al-Qaeda, ISIS controls a portion of both Syria and Iraq, as we all know. The U.S. government tells us that we, in fact, should be concerned about ISIS, but why? That's the question. Oh, and something else. Why should we be even more concerned about a lesser-known terrorist group that kind of keeps under the radar? That group is Corazon. Uh, here, the surface-to-air missile, as you see here, will be fired momentarily. The chopper will kind of hover around after it's hit and then go down and crash into the ground in Iraq. It was a helicopter, a military helicopter from Iraq. You can see it there. Let's hang on the video until we see it there. A direct hit surface-to-air missile by ISIS. Live in our studio right now is Dan Payne, a terrorism expert, a former military man who has connections in both Washington, D.C., the military. He's been all over the world dealing with terrorism. He just returned from a trip to Florida, and he is here to talk about ISIS and about Corazon and all of these groups that are associated. There's a list right here. All of these groups associated with Al-Qaeda. 436 Me TV. Option 11. Call in and we'll take your call. Back in a moment.
As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. By the way, we have a brand new sponsor here on Connect With Me. It's Turf Medics. You just saw the commercial here. It's going to run every Friday on Connect With Me and throughout the day on Me TV Fresno and other stations uh, related to Ventura Broadcasting. So thank you to Turf Medics. It's one way to keep your lawn green without having to water, my friends. Isn't that magic? That's amazing. And a former NFL player, of course, involved with Turf Medics. We all know who he is. Lorenzo Neal, former uh, NFL star and played at Fresno State. So thank you to Turf Medics. And we'll be showing that commercial throughout today's program. Anyway, Dan Payne is here again, the terrorism expert. Good to see you, my friend. Good to be here, John. Did you have Thanks a safe trip? Me. Yes, it was, a, it was a real good trip. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Good. Business, though, huh? Yes, it was business. Yeah. No no pleasure at all. <laughs> <laughs> Any details that you can share with us or no? A top secret? Or? Uh, you know, it was classified, but it was yeah. it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we'll look, be talking about some of this I, stuff today. I, I, I want to show the surface-to-air missile mm -hmm. video again. And sure. we're going to talk about all these groups. We have an hour right. here today. So let's show the surface-to-air missile number two, the video there. It's a little bit of a different angle, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, this is all over YouTube. It has been for a while. It was shown by CBS News just the other day. And here's another angle of, of this. Uh, and the question I had in the monologue, of course, how do these terrorist groups get a hold of this, this weapon here? There's so many of these in existence. This is a Stinger uh, shoulder-mounted uh, surface-to-air missile. And they're pretty um, sophisticated. They have about a, a 10,000 foot elevation limit. Uh, they can impact up to three miles away. Uh, they have built in uh, IFF, which is identification, friend or foe capability. The uh, missile guidance itself has liquid nitrogen in it so that it's better uh, for heat seeking. Uh, and it'll, it'll follow any its target if it tries to outmaneuver uh, the missile the missile will still follow it um, with the the nitrogen uh, in the guidance uh, it it makes the contrast of of the heat signature even more pronounced uh, but it's got a, a very uh, explosive warhead uh, even if it grazes the target or direct impact, it's still going to detonate and blow up and, it, and it'll take out uh, a large uh, area because of the fragmentation uh, of this, this missile. It travels, you know, it's supersonic, but, but it'll cruise at, at between 500 and 700 miles an hour. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fast missile. Uh, it weighs about 34 pounds, uh, the whole tube, uh, I actually owned a couple of these for a while and donated them, uh, but uh, the, they're made by Raytheon and General Dynamics. Uh, they replaced the Red Eye shoulder-mounted missile back in the 60s uh, and became very popular in the 70s, and they've gone through some evolutions of, of uh, product improvement. But there are thousands and thousands of these all over the world. There's a lot of countries that are authorized to have them through the U.S. and, and our State Department, uh, and they lose control of them uh, if they get overtaken or whatever, and, and which is a good segue into to a lot of these terrorist groups. They form uh, because they want to overturn the government, they want to control the government, they whatever their deal is, and whatever that government owns in, in weaponry, they take it over. So mm -hmm. it could have been, you know, some some country that we were allies with. We provided them with these Stinger rockets, and then all of a sudden, you know, they got into into someone else's hands. The quest, the other question is, uh, could one of these, if smuggled into the U.S., um, 
could they take down an airliner with one of these? Absolutely. It was, uh, I forget how many years ago it was that they found somebody in Washington, D.C. with the Stinger uh, over by Reagan International Airport, and uh, they caught him. But he was, what, what's bizarre about these these missiles is most missiles give off a signature and and the aircraft has a uh, an indicator on on the cockpit that says that it's either being tracked or it's been locked on or missile in flight uh, the stinger doesn't give off that type of signature so they'll never know that a missile is coming unless mm. they see the the a streamer of from it and you were saying even if the plane tries to to maneuver or right. dodge the missile it's a heat-seeking missile right. and it will follow sure. the object right whether it's a plane or a chopper whatever until it hits right wow and the range is how long three miles uh, three miles is is the is the maximum impact range ten thousand feet is the maximum altitude uh, so normally the ideal striking distance is between a mile and two miles. That's so generally speaking, either when a plane is taking off or landing. Then. Right. It's considered a low altitude, low speed uh, type uh, missile. Uh, if, the, if the aircraft is moving way too fast, it, it, uh, it can outrun the missile. So, hmm. so um, we're talking to Dan Payne, 436 Me TV Option 11. And so is, is one of the biggest fears for the U.S. government that one of these days, that, you know, I know you talked about the incident a few years ago at Reagan International in D.C. Um, is somebody going to smuggle one of these things in one of these days? That we, it'll just go under the radar, we won't catch it? Oh, it's very possible. Yeah, absolutely. I, I Can you almost foresee it happening? Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that there's already some here in the country illegally or, or you know, at, at someone's disposal here in the country already. Caller, you're on with Dan Payne. Your question, please. Yes, hello? Yeah, your question, please, for Dan Payne. Uh, it's not a question, it's a statement. Um, the problem that uh, we have, the reason why we're having problems with the Iranians and the Hindus and the Arabs and all that, they, got, they invite them over here to this country and they run everything and uh, they got everything tied up here in the United States and the Americans don't have nothing. And then they send, uh, you know, uh, my bottom point is, United States should keep their nose out of other people's business. Okay, good statement, but uh, well, sure you got a response to yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, it is our business. Yeah. It is our business because it, it reflects on the safety of our our people here we're uh you know a lot of people think that we stick our nose in in other people's business that we're we're into a situation where we're not needed and and we really are i mean look at the situation that we have with isis right now uh if they overtake baghdad uh that that, that sets uh, an entire imbalance of of world power and and what they're capable of doing you know, we look at uh, Korea. Korea's got uh, nuclear missiles, and uh, and I, Iran does as well. But our greatest fear is what Iran will do with them, uh, even though uh, North Korea has been an issue with us for years. Uh, just as you were talking about some of these other terrorist groups, uh, the, you know, we haven't had real issues with them, but we know that they are a probable problem. And, and if we're going to have an issue with them, uh, you know, we don't want to be caught, you know, un, unprepared or, or uh, you know, by surprise. It, this is, it's, it's really hard to convince people that it is our business. It really is because of what is the ripple effect of what these people are doing in the Middle East. And our, the threats to our country and how it, it, it threatens our freedom, our sure. safety here sure. on the homeland. Right, absolutely, right? yeah. Yeah, because it's going to, like you say, the ripple effect will eventually get to us. Right. I mean, like that, it did on 9-11. That's right. They're not going to be satisfied with, you know, one of their biggest problems is the Western world, the, the Western part of the world. Which the is lifestyle. The, yeah, they're the religion. Yeah, to us. That's yeah. what the deal is. So uh, 
they're not going to stop at at Baghdad. Right. They're not going to stop yeah. at Syria or Iran. That's just a, a stepping stone to gather their their momentum and and yeah. then do something to us. Okay, Dan Payne is our guest. He's a terrorism expert. Four three six Me TV Option Eleven. Hey, if you want to call in, ask a question. Is it our business to meddle and get involved in some of these uh, terrorist groups uh, trying to stop them or? you know, get involved in somebody else's business across the world. Does our safety depend on it? That's the question. Call in, ask the question to Dan Payne. Hey, today's program, Connect With Me, sponsored by Turf Medics. The one and only Lorenzo Neal is a partner in that, and he is a brand new sponsor here on the program. Glad to have him along every single Friday. We're back with our program in just a moment. It was 1943 when I went to war. I was almost 19. Some things about those years I've forgotten, others I'd rather forget. Listen, I ain't got nobody back home. At least you got somebody. Should hang on to that. The tank just kicked through those trees. Get help! Tell them what's coming. Is this heaven? Hell for sure. Dr. TV on Over the Air Channel 13.9. Back here on the program, just a uh, quick re reminder that Turf Medics is our brand new sponsor here on the program on Connect With Me. We're glad to have them along. Dan Payne is here. We're glad he is here uh, today. A little more on ISIS and we'll get on to some other terrorist groups. Let's roll that uh, ISIS video that has kids involved in it. They're recruiting children Correct. by the dozens. By, yes. By the dozens. dozens. I mean, Absolutely. We'll see the video here in a moment. Uh, with these kids that, that are involved. You know, it's interesting, Dan, they're recruiting kids, but they're also killing women and children. Correct. That's crazy. That it is. So the, the, the premise of it all is your choice is join us or, or be the enemy uh, is what it boils down to. The, what they're doing to these kids in brainwashing them, John, uh, is just... Uh, I mean, it turns your stomach. It, 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 it'll put a knot in your stomach. These are kids. These are kids right here. Yeah, I wonder how old that kid is. Well, look three, at them. Look at them old. small. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. These kids know how to disassemble an AK-47, clean it, and put it back together again. While our kids are learning video games and, and whatever, these kids are learning. Look at this. It's amazing. Yeah, look at d tearing down an AK. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wearing the hoodies, coming right. off the off the minivan there. Yeah, so they're recruiting by the dozen, but they're also killing kids. They are uh, who um, whose families uh, reject ISIS. That's right. You know, so you know, what do you do? And look at this. <laughs> I I think that was a look looked like a teenager holding a surface to air missile there. Yes, a stinger. Um, so this is what they're teaching their kids over there in Syria and portions of Iraq. And how do you stop this? You know, it's uh, this it's, is a, this is the ultimate in homegrown right, right here. That's it. It's the, it's their way of life. You know, what's amazing to me is they know that it's very possible that they're going to be used as human shields as suicide bombs whatever and they still buy off on this they still are committed and dedicated to do uh what they're asked and told to do uh, and the family support it i mean imagine being a, a father or a mother to a child that uh, is going to be used as a human shield or or a suicide bomb uh, and they support it. They go along with it for the most part. Yeah, I, you know, our government is sending mixed signals, though, because it's almost like we're halfway in this thing and halfway out. How productive are the airstrikes against ISIS? Um, actually, uh, they're, they're a lot more productive than I thought they were going to be. I mean, they're still not, it's not the answer, and it's not going to remedy 
uh, ISIS and all. Now what ISIS is doing is they're not congregating in any one place in large groups anymore. Uh, and, and I made that comment last time I was on your show was uh, the problem with airstrikes is that they only work when you have a high concentration of personnel, if you have a headquarters building, if you have a, uh, an ammo dump or, or supply uh, headquarters. Uh, but now they're dispersing things and, and they're moving them into residential areas and they're having their meetings in residential areas and not in large groups anymore, smaller groups. So we're not getting uh, the bang for our buck uh, with, the, with the bombs anymore. All right. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, a comment um, a second ago that wasn't a Stinger missile. It was a simple rocket launcher. Um, two, we're the ones creating most of this stuff. These people want to just preserve their culture and their religion. We're forcing them. satellite systems, rocket launchers, all kinds of aerial vehicles. Basically, they're just trying to preserve themselves at any cost. If we don't start doing stuff and realizing we're great or causing this, it's going to happen to us here in America. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, let me, I mean, let me ask you business. something. This Call guy's getting paid for it daily. Caller, let me ask you something. Are you blaming America? Yeah. Are you blaming us? No, I, I, partly. But at the same Why? time, we just need to simply respect everybody. We don't need to be in everybody's business or forcing them what to do. So we should just let ISIS and Corazon no, and Al-Qaeda, Al just let them do what they want? We have these people. How did they get these weapons? We did that. Wow. I'm not well, sure yeah. I agree that it's our fault. Right. I, I, you're, no, but you're, it's you're, cause you're... and effect of forcing something else on somebody else's people. Well, in, in, and I, I understand what you're saying, but um, for the most part, I mean, this goes on all the time. Look at Africa, look at the Congo, look at, at some of those areas where there's uh, continuous torture, continuous uh, abuse of, of people and, and kids and, and, you know, the, the forced sex slavery and things like that. We don't get involved in that. So why do we get involved in some of these Middle Eastern uh areas because we know through intelligence that it's not going to stop there that their intentions are to uh, inflict uh, harm to our people as well so whether we take it to them or they bring it to us it's going to happen we don't go to another country uh, just because of the atrocities that are happening that's one of the reasons but it also has to be coupled with what is their end result? What is in their mission statement? What is their goal? Are they in any way a threat to the United States? If we take the battle to them, we're preserving our, our borders, our people, and keeping them safe. If we just want to stay here and think that nobody is ever going to do anything to us, we're, we're sadly mistaken because it's going to happen. Yeah, I think uh, Richard Nixon, love him or hate him, uh, before he left office said, uh, the biggest challenge that we're going to face in the next century is going to be East versus West. Correct. Meaning the Muslims versus the Christians and the Jews. Correct. And it's come to pass, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, absolutely. To a certain extent. All right, time to take a break here. Oh, we have a call. Let's take the call first before we go to break here on Connect With Me. Okay, caller, you're on the air. Get, uh, give me your question, please. Caller, go ahead. Your question? Okay, a little impatient there. Okay. We're going to be back. 436, Me TV, Option 11. Today's program sponsored by Turf Medics, a brand new sponsor here on our show. Back in just a moment. We get our speed from mom and dad. They do stuff super fast. And now they got this new kitchen, so they're even faster. So they can help us with our free throws. The time-saving Frigidaire Gallery line with a quick preheat and smudge-proof stainless steel that resists fingerprints and cleans easily. It's mealtime in no time from start to clean. Frigidaire Gallery. Save more during Frigidaire Gallery bonus days when you buy three or more qualifying appliances. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. We'll take more of your phone calls. 436-ME-TV, option 11. Today's program sponsored by Turf Medics and uh, headed up by Lorenzo Neal, a former NFL star. Thanks for that. So we were talking about terrorism and ISIS. Let's roll the next piece of videotape in ISIS. And I'm just going to ask you, Dan, just briefly here, um, how did this group become so powerful so quickly um, and so controlling in some of these areas in Syria, 
uh, and uh, parts of Iraq, and like you say, they better not, hopefully, not take over Baghdad. Correct. The, uh, what happens is uh, uh, ISIS is, is a offshoot of Al-Qaeda, uh, and they formed because they didn't believe that Al-Qaeda was aggressive enough and they weren't doing enough to, uh, to make a statement. They, they were very smart in what they did. Uh, they started taking over towns and cities and villages in Iraq that were predominantly Sunni already. Uh, yeah, ISIS, ISIS is, is Sunni. Sunni. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> you know, when everybody from worldwide was looking at them and saying, oh my gosh, they just overtook another city, another town, another village, you know, they're gathering momentum. Notice they didn't start out with Iraq, or I mean with Baghdad. Baghdad is not predominantly Sunni. It's got a lot of different uh, factions there. Including Shia. Right. Right. So, they're not going to go for the big dog right off the bat. Uh, they would have lost right off it wouldn't yeah. have worked. So they started gaining momentum, uh, taking all these towns that were predominantly Sunni, and it r really wasn't a battle of any, you know, of, of, of any proportion. So in their process, e even their comments, they made the comment that uh, they were going to raise so much money a day, and it was going to be through uh, stealing and and you know robbery and and whatever and remember when they broke into the bank and they stole some money from the bank they got a significant amount of money somebody came up with the idea that why don't we just uh, confiscate some of these oil fields and they did that and they're the the report is they're making up to five hundred million dollars sometimes a day uh, with the uh, the accumulation of all the the oil and what they're doing um, that's not their everyday, uh, you know, acquisition of, of funds. But uh, in order to be successful in, in any war, uh, you know, you have to have the personnel, you have to have the desire, and you have to have money. And they, by uh, giving the impression that they overtook all these cities, all these towns, which really were not a fight in the first place, and then uh, couple that with the money that they got with from the oil wells, they have the winning combination. And now uh, they're so. How powerful are they now? Very, very, very powerful. Can they? Yeah. Are they? Are they powerful enough to go in and overtake a Baghdad? I we're a lot more worried about that now than we were a month and a half ago. Uh, I mean, I would say that the majority of the people said there's absolutely no way that they're going to take Baghdad. Now we have some of those same people saying we better do something because if they take over Baghdad, we're, we're in a lot of trouble. The other thing is we have an embassy in Baghdad that is probably one of the most sophisticated intel gathering embassies anywhere. And uh, if they it becomes... Uh, Eminent that they're or or evident that they're going to take over Baghdad, we're probably going to self-destroy that embassy. If uh, if you're trying to convince me or maybe anybody else, I know we do have a phone call here. I know the government has said that ISIS is a threat to this country. Sure. Okay. The government has has, has repeatedly said that. Let's pick up on that after okay. the call here real quick. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. What's your question, caller? Yes. Yeah, yes. your question, your question, please. No, it's um... Hello? Okay. Um, if ISIS is a threat, how would they attack us here? What do we have to we be worried about? Are they going to attack our ports? Are they going to attack our buildings? Are they going to come in with a dirty bomb? What Are they going to take a plane down? How, how are they plotting against us, and what specific attack do we have to be worried about here? Well, I think, you know, uh, we have a Malaysia flight that's still unaccounted for. We have over a dozen jumbo jet passenger jets that are unaccounted for. Not really? Not just Malaysia. Right. There's a lot of planes. Well, wait a minute. The, <laughs> we have over a dozen? Yes. yes. That are unaccounted, unaccounted for? Unaccounted for. That are just went off the radar? That's right. I just saw a video tape of Flight 370, the Malaysian flight that disappeared, I believe, in the spring. Mm-hmm. That's in March? Right. So you don't think it disappeared. You no. think it's somewhere I th in the world. Right. 
And and what else do you think about it? I think that we're going to see it again. I think it's it's going to be uh, maybe repainted uh, to uh, appear as as a friendly aircraft of another country or whatever. It definitely has state of the art, uh, you know, electronics and technology on it. Mm -hmm. This is some of the video here from the Malaysian flight, and uh, you know the problem is is that. Um, you know, there are so many conspiracy theories. Okay, um, what's the possibility of this plane, if you want to be a conspiracy theorist, being used as a weapon against us or maybe a, a, one of our allies? Oh, I, I think it's there's a high possibility of that happening. I, I, I believe that's the only reason why it was confiscated. If what you're saying is true, that could happen. Correct. And you think it's true because it, for the sole purpose of it being used as a weapon. So what happened to all the passengers? The, probably, I, I hate to say this, but I, they were probably all executed and, and probably mass graves. It just how do you how do you hijack a plane and hide it under the radar and it just disappears? And then where where do you park it? Where do you land it? I mean, somebody's got to notice a landing, a plane landing well, you know, somewhere. Let's let's take the With satellites. The theory have. of uh, that it was uh, hijacked, and, and how far was it from from Vietnam? We had we had runways in Vietnam that handled B fifty two bombers, you know, and they were hidden in Vietnam. Uh, so why couldn't we use those same runways and and put a Malaysian uh, airliner out there and hide it as well. Uh, it's, it's very possible. Yeah, and you're looking at some of the video from uh, the families who had uh, friends and family members on board that the Flight 370 that disappeared. You don't think it was a Bermuda Triangle type disappearance, huh? No, because uh, immediately there were so many countries involved in doing infrared, uh, heat signature searches, x-ray searches, and uh, the, the black box was still transmitting and would have transmitted for days, and they have were... Have we ever found the black box? No. Never? No, never. That's, you know, you, wow. you, you should have found debris, you know, you should have found something, uh, maybe bodies, maybe clothing, maybe luggage floating or something. We never saw that, never saw it. Yeah, the other Malaysian flight, of course, shot down in uh, over Ukraine. Right. Uh, that one, we know what happened to it, but uh, the other one, who knows? Flight 370 is still missing at this point. Dan Payne is our guest, and our number here, 436-MeTV, option 11, call in. Our new sponsor here, Turf Medics. Thank you for that. Back in just a moment. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, oh, no. and television the Me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here on the program, a call coming in. Uh, caller, your question to Dan Payne, please. Yeah, about the airplane thing, would something as simple as a cell phone jammer be able to jam the identity of an aircraft? You know, uh, it's a good question. That particular aircraft, the Malaysian aircraft that went down, had uh, a new computer system on it that was uh, unlike any other computer system on any other aircraft. Boeing did not like the idea of installing that computer system on that aircraft. Normally computer systems on aircraft are segmented into fuel, uh, navigation. Uh, Could that you, plane have been strategically planned out to get then? No, oh, that, that was a flaw in the computer program? Uh, it wasn't a flaw. In fact, that, that computer system did exactly what it was supposed to do. But uh, yeah, was it planned to do that way? Who knows? Uh, I, I wouldn't put it past anybody because there was a lot of people who didn't agree with having that type of a computer system on an aircraft where uh, anybody could tap into that computer that had the, the ability to do so and could control that entire aircraft, the fuel, navigation, everything, where ordinarily you wouldn't be able to do that. You can do one part of the aircraft, but not all of the aircraft. And this one 
happened to have a system on it that was brand new that had that ability to, to control all the computers. Everything. Everything. And you Why think, would you put something like that on an aircraft? That's what Boeing was saying. Why do we want to have <laughs> something like this on an aircraft? And they were forced uh, by whoever uh, to We don't comply. know by who. No. Uh, I, I could probably find out specifically uh, who and why. Um, I would imagine they sold it as this is a better deal, it's a better computer, it's more up to date, one person can take care of everything instead of having to have all these different people. So is this one reason why never, we never heard about any cell phone calls during that flight? Right. Yeah, I, I, I could think be one reason. One, uh, the other reason could be while they were so high in the air that whoever and, and whomever were involved in this could have confiscated everybody's phones while they were up high and, and unable to uh, make any calls. And then by the time it landed and they were able to do calls, nobody had a phone you know, anymore. I mean, all of this is speculation. We sure. really don't know. Maybe at takeoff, maybe they killed all the passengers. Could have been. Could have been. And could the have pilots gassed them. Could have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, could have gassed them. Um, of course, uh, the pilots could have been in on it. Sure. Uh, we don't know for sure exactly what happened to Flight 370, but, uh, you know, uh, speaking of going off the radar, we haven't heard about this flight in a long time. Right. Not since probably early summer. Right. When it kind of went off the radar, and then Ukraine became the big story, sure. and everybody forgot about Flight 370, but still, maybe a major, major story that uh, has been untold. Uh, caller, what's your question? Whoops. Okay. Um, so, okay, I, I do want to go over some of these other groups because... These are groups that are offshoots from Al-Qaeda. And I'm going to go over these very slowly, uh, one by one. There's a group named Shabab, I think. That's the correct pronunciation. Uh, primarily, they have, well, they have several thousand fighters in Somalia. It's an offshoot of Al-Qaeda. What do you know about them? They're, they're a, a group to be reckoned with. But let's talk about this is a group out of Somalia. We had a caller who just called a little bit ago who said we ought to stay out of people's business. <laughs> Given that, that premise, if, if we were to be getting in everybody's business, why are we not in the business in Somalia over this terrorist group? Why? Yeah, there are several thousand fighters, according right. to the New York Times. I got right. this from the New York Times, a source, uh, saying there are several thousand Al-Qaeda offshoot fighters there, and the name of the group is Shabab. We never hear anything about that. No. No. I, I, you know, I, I, the last time I was on your show, we talked about some of the terrorist groups, and I told you that yeah. we have over 53 terrorist groups that we, uh, CIA and Homeland and, and all, uh, have tracks on yeah. that, that we're constantly surveillance on them. Um, and later in the show, we'll put some of those up, but not now, because right. I want to go over these first, so, and we'll put some of these up. Go ahead. Right. So, uh, you know, they're, although they're, they're not... In our opinion, they're not dangerous, and, and we kind of weigh out the, the danger of what they're doing, how active are they. What are they doing in Somalia? What are they, they I mean, have, are they, they training? I yeah, mean, they're training, and they actually uh, have created uh, terrorist activities to the locals there in some of the surrounding areas. You know, one thing about these terrorist groups, John, is uh, borders mean nothing to them. There's, mm -hmm. you know, the country lines, state lines, whatever, mean nothing to them. Uh, There's another group in northern Africa, and they're an Islamic group, an offshoot of Al-Qaeda, and there's about a thousand fighters there. So what are they doing in northern Africa? Training again? They are active. They do have a mission. Uh, it just, we don't, we don't uh, promote it or, or advertise it because it's not yeah. uh, an issue to us. Hey, caller, go ahead. What's your question? You know, Dan asked the question a second ago, why are we not in Somalia? Because they have to keep these groups in, in action to build up. They're also making money, just like we are saying earlier, it's a business. All these gangs are making money for a handful of rich people. Who are the rich people? Are you talking about oh, that America benefits? Well, you made a comment about Somalia, why we're not going down there and we need to stay out of other people's business. He said to himself, he's CIA. How do we have involvement with all these different organizations if we're not part of it? Um, you know, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't subscribe to uh, some of these, uh, you know, theories or conspiracy theories or whatever. 
Uh, I know uh, from practical experience and actual experience that uh, we don't go out and see where we can get involved. We're not making money. Uh, you know, I, I remember uh, people accusing us of getting into a desert storm over oil. And uh, that's not, that, that wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. I want to go over some of these other groups, these offshoots of Al-Qaeda, and you can comment on uh -huh. them as we go along. Of course, uh, along the Arabian uh, Peninsula in Yemen, uh, a thousand fighters there, no surprise right. there. No, no, and yeah. it's, a, it's a very unstable area. It used to be, Yemen used to be uh, a Dubai, prior to Dubai getting the popularity that it was. Now, uh, people don't even want to go there uh, because of what's going on there with the terrorist activity. Yeah, an Indian subcontinent, uh, Kashmir region, there's a new branch of Al-Qaeda there. We don't know exactly how many uh, fighters are, are in the Kashmir region, but apparently they've spread over into India. Correct. Uh, that's another group, again, uh, some of these groups are breaking away from Al-Qaeda, uh, mainly because they don't feel Al-Qaeda is representing them the way they, they need to be represented or, or Al-Qaeda is not aggressive right. enough. And then there's the group called Nusra. Uh, they're the front group, of course, uh, for that, uh, that group, the offshoot of Al-Qaeda, fighting against the Assad regime. And apparently they have several thousand right. fighters on the ground fighting Assad and his and his his army his regime now so so where do we stand with that again we're we keep them under observation we don't uh, we don't retaliate with every uh, terrorist group that's out there uh, we just deal with those that are a threat to the United States you know, you look at the, some of these numbers, or a thousand, several thousand, you know, uh, over 10,000, whatever. Understand that some of these guys are not committed and dedicated to this terrorist group. They just want the benefits of the terrorist group. Uh, they, get, they get fed, uh, they get clothing, their families are taken care of. Uh, you know, we do have to take a break. We're talking with Dan Payne. He's a terrorism expert. But I do want to talk about what's going on in Syria when we come back, because you have this Nusra group here. You've got the Khorasan group. You have ISIS. I mean, these are three factions right there in right. Syria slash Iraq, if you will, and what the U.S. should do about it. Who are we bombing? Who's our enemy? And who is our ally over there in Syria and Iraq? It's very confusing with all these terror groups. And Al-Qaeda's got one, two, three, four, five, six offshoots uh, that we have to deal with, our government at least, and our, our terror experts. Back with our program, 436 Me TV Option 11. Thanks to Turf Medics for being a brand new sponsor here on the program. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Hey, our big thanks to Lorenzo Neal and his company, Turf Medics, for being a brand new sponsor here on Connect With Me. You'll see that uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, promo or commercial every Friday and throughout the day here on MeTV and other Ventura broadcasting stations throughout the course of uh, this day and portions of tomorrow. So we're talking about all these groups. Okay, so I'm a member of a um, you know, uh, I'm a terrorism expert here in the here in the here in this country, and I work for the government. Let's say I'm just using a, a, as a hypothetical, and I'm dealing with all these terror groups. I'm dealing with Nusra, uh, which is a front group for Al Qaeda in uh, Syria, fighting the uh, against the Assad regime. Then you have the Khorasan group that has come along. By the way, let me explain what Khorasan is. They're they're kind of the terrorist group that's uh, staying under the radar right. at this point. Uh, they've carried out numerous uh, airstrikes our government has against this terrorist group. In fact, yesterday it was reported that this guy, uh, David uh, Drugan, a Muslim convert known as a master bomb maker, was actually killed, killed. in one of these airstrikes. So you've got Khorasan committing terrorist acts, and then you have ISIS. So how do you fit all these pieces together, Dan, and make sense out of it? Well, first of all, understand... Who's our enemy? <laughs> they all are, but... Uh, 
but they all have different causes. Uh, you're not going to find them all joining together. I mean, you, you have three, four major groups in Syria alone. Why why don't you have just one super large group? You yeah, know, why? They, they all have uh, their own agendas, and they all want power and money. So Nusra is not going to join forces with the Khorasan group? No. Are they Are they enemies? They're not enemies. They just respect each other's mission and they don't Territory. get involved right it's like a gang it's exactly like a gang the each individual uh terrorist group that breaks away from al-qaeda for whatever reason uh you know a lot of times it just boils down to uh power and money and somebody in the al-qaeda group uh, that starts getting a following of, uh, on his own and breaks away and starts his own group and some of the people follow him uh, and, you know, most of these guys rob and steal, and they're funded by that, and it's, they, they live, uh, you know, they, they live well based on this, all the money they is, This is how I understand it. Nusra is fighting against the Assad regime. They have several thousand fights. Who does Nusra answer to? Nobody? Nobody. They, they, they don't answer away. to anybody in Pakistan? I mean, that's where al-Qaeda is right. based. No, but. not once they break away... Uh, you know, as long as they're not a threat to Al Qaeda or Taliban or, you know, another terrorist group, they're going to be left alone. Are we trying to fight Nusra, Nusra, Nusra as well? We're observing them. Uh, they're definitely in, in our, our well, line. But we're not using airstrikes against them? No. no. Okay. Now, the Khorasan group, uh, they apparently, from what I read, uh, is a group that's under the radar, as I said before. But they're more into trying to commit these terror acts uh, overseas, right? Like the United States, maybe Europe. Right. Is that your understanding of this yes. group? Right. Yeah. They're not not so much in Syria or Iraq, no. but they want to go overseas and commit harm well, that's, to us. Well, that's why when I was making the comment earlier about, you know, who has nukes and do we treat every country that has a nuke uh, the same? No, we don't. Uh, we're going to treat Iran a lot differently uh, with their new capability uh, than we're going to treat uh, North Korea. Right, and apparently this this group Khorasan, their their aunt, their supreme leader is in Pakistan. His name is Zawari. Right, uh, you're you're familiar with him. Right. Uh, now that's the Khorasan group. So what about ISIS? Who do they answer to? Anybody? ISIS? Uh, no, they're, they're remember they they broke away from Al Qaeda. Because they were not, uh, they were not uh, pleased with the way uh, Al Qaeda was doing business. So they're not gonna, they're not going to. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, Al Qaeda respects what ISIS is doing because yeah. you know they're they're doing what Al Qaeda would like to do, but just didn't. But and they're I, doing it on a larger scale. But ISIS isn't necessarily focusing on terrorism overseas. No. That's Corazon. Well, we don't know that yet. We, we do okay. know. Right. We do know that ISIS has uh, members in the United States, and they do have members uh, in Britain as well, okay. uh, in in other places as well. So they have cells here. Correct. They have foot soldiers on the ground here. What's the possibility of some of those uh, foot soldiers in this country setting off an attack? Like, you know, okay. Homegrown mm -hmm. terrorists. We, I mean, I could mention several incidents which I which I wrote down here. Back in 2009, we had the Fort Hood shooter. Uh, this year, of course, we had the Ottawa shooting, the National Guard War Memorial up in Canada. Um, we had uh, just the other day this guy, a convert, another Muslim con uh, convert, attacked four rookie police officers in New right. York City. You right. heard about that. And what about the beheading in Oklahoma? That's another one committed right. by a person who just converted to Islam. Correct. So we have these small incidents, and I say small, but they're not they're not big enough where they took down a plane or something like that. Should we be concerned about inc isolated incidents like this? Uh, uh, yes and no. Um, uh, some of these people are are they just have issues anyway, mental issues or what all, but I, I they use. Uh, ISIS or terrorism as as a means to vent, uh, if uh, to have an identity, to uh, feel like they belong or have importance or contributed in a significant way uh, to a cause. 
Um, you know, we have people in the United States that tried to join al-Qaeda, al that tried to join uh, the Taliban, and they were refused, but they still did things anyway, trying to prove. All right. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. What's your question for Dan Payne? My question is, Dan, you keep saying that these other countries and other terrorist groups are enemies. What declares these people enemies? I mean, do they announce it or did they have a meeting and said hey we hate america yeah pretty much yes they do they they'll definitely talk about what their mission statement is what they're trying to do uh, why they're doing what they're doing and they name uh you know s certain people that uh they they have an issue with and uh if they name the united states and then uh pose uh an actual threat we're going to get involved Okay, time to take a break here on Connect with me, talking to Dan Payne. When we come back, we'll show you a list. We'll put that list up on the screen of the top 10 terror groups around the world. Uh, 436, Me TV, Option 11. Thanks to Turf Medics for being our sponsor here today on Connect with Me. Frigidaire. It means the first refrigerator. It means a history of innovations that help make your home life better. And now we introduce the new Frigidaire French Door Refrigerator with over 100 ways to organize for maximum flexibility. Built with adjustable flip-up and slide-under shelving and stackable crisper drawers, it's the refrigerator that flexes to fit it all, no matter what your day will bring. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Back here on the program on Connect With Me, and Dan, I want to put up on the screen the first, I guess, five terror groups, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a list that you compiled for us, and explain, obviously, what these groups are. Some we've heard of, I guess most we've heard of here. How do they reach the top ten? Now, this is the top five. Is this the top five in our country, the world? How does this work? This is a pretty much a world view uh, of what the top ten uh, terrorists are. And, and it up updates, uh, you know, heck, by next next week it, it could be different. Uh, note also, that, you know, Al-Qaeda is probably one of the oldest uh, terrorist groups out there. It started with uh, uh, Baghdadi years ago, and he uh, spent some time in prison, got out of prison, started uh, this terrorist group, uh, was killed, and then another person took over. Uh, right after afterwards, there's always somebody in line waiting to jump in. I, I one of your people made a comment about, you know, were we better off leaving uh, Osama bin Laden or or Saddam Hussein alive? In, alive because uh, sometimes it takes a radical person like that to keep everybody else in line. When we take somebody out like that, or they're killed or terminated or or whatever. The, the people jockeying for position are trying <laughs> to make a name and show that they are worthy of taking that position. So they're going to be pretty extreme in what they do, trying to so gain. So we should have expected this to happen oh, with, with, with Saddam and, and, and uh, bin Laden going down. We tried, you know, we tried a tactic and they had the deck of cards, the 52 uh, cards, and they had like who the top guys are all the way down to uh, the the. the you know the the priority and i don't want to say lesser of importance or lesser of significance but it it kind of was that way so we decided okay if we take out all 52 of these guys uh because any one of those guys would have been a prime candidate to take over for uh saddam uh then we, it buys us time and we're not going to have uh some radical guy coming in but we did we had people right off the bat waiting to come come in and uh you know, same thing with bin Laden. You know, we, we took out bin Laden, and, and within a matter of days, we already had people that were jockeying for position. Who's yeah. going to take you his You have all place. these offshoots That's that right. want to come in and take power, take control. Right. Let's put up that second group there, six through ten. Uh, that's the first five, and we'll do, uh, do the second five, and there they are. Some of these groups, uh, I've never heard of them. Right. The, now, uh, look at number seven, Revolutionary mm. Armed Forces of Colombia. While the Kurds and, and Al-Qaeda and Khorasan and all these other groups mm -hmm. are pretty much Islamic and, and have pretty much the same focus, uh, just a, a different way of getting there. The Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia is actually a drug uh, terrorist group, and it's to help uh, promote the illegal drug uh, 
you know, transportation and, and mm. distribution, but that's what their main purpose is. So wow. it's not always, you know, just Islamic groups or, or groups that are uh, uh, wanting to take out America because we're, uh, you know, infidels and Christians. And, and who makes up this list? Would it be the U.S. government? Uh, would it be the U.N. determine this or who? It's, it's, there's another group besides the U.N. Uh, because the UN isn't necessarily all our friends. Uh, you know, there's people in the UN that support countries that we're enemies with. So right. uh, we're looking at, at a different group that puts this together. Before we run out of time here, I want to put up this uh, picture of this guy, Navy SEAL, the former Navy SEAL of uh, uh, Navy SEAL 6, I believe. That's, that was the team. His name is Robert O'Neill. And apparently he told the Washington Post during an interview that he is the man who killed Osama bin Laden. Shot him through the head twice, according to him and his accounts to the Washington Post. This was reported widely yesterday on the internet and over the air broadcast with the nightly news, ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, CNN reported it, Fox News reported it. Um, the, he, he broke the code of silence. Absolutely. With the Navy SEALs. Right. How much damage did he do to himself, his family, uh, the military and to this country. You know, this is one of those selfish acts where you want recognition, uh, whatever motivated him to do this. Uh, you're right, it did break a code of silence. Um, I, I have my doubts as to his commitment and dedication uh, to uh, the Navy SEALs. Uh, you know, these guys are a cut up above uh, everybody else and it's not easy to become a SEAL. Uh, this guy, if he's really a SEAL, for him to come out and, first of all, give his real name and take credit for, uh, you know, a headshot, uh, that is just not the, the Navy SEAL way. And mm -hmm. if that's really his name and, and he really claims to be the guy who did this, uh, he just painted the biggest target uh, on himself that, that he could have possibly uh, done. Could he be court-martialed? Uh, well, he's not. He won't be court-martialed because he's no longer in the service. Okay. But he could be tried uh, for treason. For treason, or, really? or for um, uh, for uh, damage to national security. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that he can. And if it's not true, uh, he could be tried for perjury and and uh, and so on. Yeah. Uh, how much time left? A couple of minutes? Two minutes left. Let's take a quick call here and uh, see what's going on. Okay, caller, your quick question, please. It's got to be very quick because we're almost out of time. With the amount of terrorist groups that we have here in the United States, do you think the, the American people should think seriously about being armed or not? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that we should always be concerned uh, with the people here, uh, the terrorist groups that are here, and I think uh, we need to be prepared ourselves, uh, whether it's educationally, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, having a safe room in your house or whatever. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a very serious issue, and, uh, and absolutely, I know my family, we are. You're prepared. Absolutely. In case of a terrorist attack. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. How do you, and my how neighbors know that. You ask <laughs> any one of my neighbors, how they does, say we're going to Dan Payne's house. How, how, how are you? What do you have? An underground bunker or something, or what? <laughs> we, I, I have, I have a food supply. Okay. Uh, I have a water supply. I have an extensive uh, uh, weapons arsenal uh, and lots of ammunition. <laughs> so, hey, getting back to this guy O'Neill, this former Navy SEAL. How do we even know this guy's telling the truth? But it's all legal, too, John. Just okay. so that, oh, yeah. Go, yeah. I, yeah. I'm glad you verified yeah. that. How do we know this guy's telling you? We have 30 seconds. How I do think, we know he is the shooter just because he said so? Right. It, it's, uh, it would have to take verification from, uh, you know, the Department of the Navy uh, and, you know, our, our State Department. And I doubt they're going to ever do that.
Yeah. Hey, I'd like you to come back soon. Absolutely. Maybe uh, sometime in January or February, or if you're available. Me. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Stay safe. I know okay, you will. Yeah. I'm coming yeah. to your house, absolutely. too. Come on down. All right. <laughs> Dan Payne, our terrorism expert here on Connect With Me. We're glad he took the time to come on the program. Thanks to Turf Medics, our brand-new sponsor here on the show. Have a great weekend. Back Monday with George Bruner, formerly of the Fresno Bee. You know who he is? Have a great